This is The Lockpicking Lawyer, and today I wanted to talk about lockpicking tension. Now let me start out by saying that skillful tensioning is, in my opinion, more important than skillful picking, particularly when it comes to the more advanced locks. It's also far more difficult to master. And it's probably because we tend not to pay as much attention to it as we should. I think that's a big mistake. Tension, it seems to be glossed over in most picking instructional materials. And when it is mentioned, the advice is always this, use the lightest tension possible. And that's a piece of advice that I disagree with. Now I wanna talk about two general topics today. First, we're gonna talk about tension tool selection and placement in the keyway. And then after that, I'll give you some substantive thoughts on how to tension locks. On the first topic, this might seem basic, but bear with me for a moment. To be able to select the best tension tool for an application for any particular lock, you first need to understand what a tension tool should do and shouldn't do. It has two main purposes. It has to turn the core and it has to transmit feedback to the picker. On the flip side, what shouldn't it do? Well, it shouldn't get in the way of the pick. There's other do's and don'ts, but for now we're gonna stick with those three main items and we'll take them one by one. First, the tool needs to turn the core. Okay, every tool is capable of that, so there isn't much to say here. Second, the tool needs to provide feedback. Now this is no small thing. Most of the feedback from a lock comes to you through the tension tool, so it's really important. The tools that provide the best feedback are, inevitably, the thickest and the stiffest. That's why you always see me using tools like this. That's a 50 thousandths pry bar, and it's about the thickest and stiffest tool that I have. Now, it's also why you almost never see me using a tool like this. This tool is designed to flex and to be springy, which is the exact opposite of what we want. You ask a mechanical engineer and you ask them, what's the best way to dampen the transmittal of vibration? And they'll tell you, mount it on a spring. So why would you want to put a spring in between the lock and the picker when you want to feel every subtle bit of movement and vibration? This tool also appreciably, I mean, it, I mean, it degrades the transmittal feedback so much that frankly, I'm not sure why they're so popular. Instead, when circumstances call for the use of a wiper insert, I usually use tools like this. And that is because they're tensioned and you tension them in the sideways direction and it's much, much stiffer and it transmits feedback much, much better. Now, you also can't select a tension tool unless you know where you're gonna put it. Now, if you've watched my videos for long, you know that I usually prefer top of the keyway tension, but there's nothing dogmatic about that. My goal is to put the tension wrench in a position that complements my picking. In other words, I need to keep the tension tool out of the way of my pick, and top of the keyway tension does that beautifully. Let's take a look at this lock. Okay, this is a master lock keyway. Most of you are probably familiar with it. Now, this is where you're gonna stick your pick all the time. Right down here, that's where you're gonna maneuver it, in the bottom of the keyway. So I don't understand why you would want to put a tension tool down there when that's gonna take up most of your picking room. What you should do, or what I do at least, is I put it at the top of the keyway and then that leaves that whole bottom of the keyway still open for picking. Also, I guess while we're looking at this, another benefit of top of the keyway tension is that there is no possibility of binding the core. Now look at where we put this tension tool. It's right on the bottom, and this tool can drag on the lock body. If it drags there, it can bind the core up, and that is a big problem for your picking. You obviously don't want that. Now there are circumstances in which I use bottom of the keyway. The most significant is when I use the tension tool as a platform off of which to pick. 
And this Avis Titalium is a good example of that. I mean, this is a, a huge keyway. If we just stick a pick in there, I mean, it's almost too low in the keyway. And what I did when I was picking this is I put my tension tool right there. And what that did is created a nice little platform for me to, to lever my pick off of, and it could pick very, very nicely through that keyway. Now there's also locks where it just doesn't matter where you put it. And the quick set, KW1 is a great example of that. I mean, most of the time when you're picking these, you're placing your pick right here. And so it doesn't matter if you use top of the keyway tension, or maybe if you put your tension right there. In either case, it's totally out of the way. And for locks like this, I generally use top of the keyway anyway, just because it's what I'm accustomed to. <coughs> now, sometimes top of the keyway tension is very difficult because the keyway is very, very tight. And this Eva lock is an example of that. And take a look at this keyway. I mean, absolutely no room for, for a tension tool up there, at least anything of normal size. And you also need on this lock the bottom of the keyway for picking. And that's why it's important to always have a good selection. This is something from the Peterson Flat 5. And it's a little springier than I would like. But in the case of this lock, it's what fits the bill, and you really can't pick it without something like that. Okay. <sighs> okay, on to our, <laughs> my thoughts on tension. One of my largest frustrations with the lock sport community is that we don't pay enough attention to tension. And if the instructional videos out there are any indication, our understanding of how to use tension is pretty bad. And I think this needs to change. So my hope for this video, even if you disagree with my advice, is that we start to pay more attention to our tension strategy and start to discuss it. Now before I get into the substantive advice, let me start by saying that I'm only going to give an overview here. I may make videos on different or more advanced tensioning topics in the future, but for now that's beyond the scope of this video. And this video is probably going to be long enough as it is. So the accepted and most common advice out there regarding tensioning locks is that a picker should use the minimum tension required to pick the lock. And that may work best for some people, but definitely not for me. This advice has always kind of struck me as one of those emperor has no clothes situations. It seems like everyone is saying one thing when the exact opposite is my experience. My method of tension can be summed up as follows. Use the heaviest tension possible for each particular lock. Notice that I didn't say use heavy tension. I said use the heaviest tension possible. I'll explain what that means in a moment. But let's first talk about why I favor heavy, heavier tension. And there's quite a few benefits of heavier tension that are seldom discussed. First, and most importantly, it massively amplifies our feedback. It turns what might be a subtle little click into something that can be heard across the room. So it makes pin setting more distinct. The more feedback you get, the easier the lock will be to pick. Second, there's no question about which pins are binding because the heavier tension causes them to bind so much more firmly. Now for some locks, particularly with those with, with better tolerances, and there we go, this sergeant's a good example. The pins in there, when you're putting small amounts of tension on it, for lack of a better term, everything's mushy inside. It's really hard to tell what's binding, what's binding the hardest. But if you crank that tension up, all that goes away. When I was first beginning, I was having real trouble with sergeant locks. But once I learned to increase the tension, these locks instantly went from being difficult for me to pick to easily and quickly pickable. I mean, it was literally an overnight transformation. Third, 
It allows faster picking because you'll likely bind multiple pins. Here, we all know that most of the time spent picking is spent hunting for the pin that needs the work. When you bind multiple pins at once, this wasted time is decreased. Fourth, it helps prevent oversets. And this isn't, this isn't just because of the feel and sound of the pin setting and that being more distinct, but it's actually physically harder to overset the key pin, even if you're trying to overset it. Fifth, heavier tension keeps pins from moving when you maneuver your pick through the lock. That's especially helpful on tight little keyways. Here's one, this uh, Abus EC75. Look at that tight, tight, tight little dimple keyway. This lock is darn near impossible to pick unless you use heavy tension when you're moving your pick through there because it, you can't avoid helping, you can't help but to hit pins and you're gonna move them without wanting to. So with heavier tension, you bind the pins up harder and you can keep them from moving. Finally, it allows for sound picking of serrated pins. In other words, you can listen for the difference between the click of a serration and that really sharp shear line click. And once you get the hang of this, it really takes a lot of the mystery out of serrated pins. If you're interested, check out my video number 97. I talk about this a little more. Now, let's move on to the practical application of of heavier tension. Now recall that I previously said I use the heaviest tension possible. I didn't say use heavy tension. And let me explain what that means. First, you have to know that your tension can't be so heavy that you bind the pins and keep them from moving. But this means something different for different kinds of locks. For a lock with standard pins, I keep my tension very high. When I find a binding pin, I loosen up just enough to allow the pin to move. Once I set it, I crank that tension back up and move on to the next pin. Now obviously this means that you're gonna have to use more picking force and it's a little harder on your picks, but I think those side effects are more than worth the benefits. Now how about security pins? Well, use the heaviest tension possible means something entirely different there. With these types of pins, variation of tension becomes even more important and I'm sorry to say, more complex. Even when I vary the tension, however, I use the heaviest tension possible for each stage of picking the lock. Now I can't do this for every kind of pin, but let's break it down for spools, the most common security pin. What's the tension advice that everyone uses for spools? Use light tension. Well, yes and no. The truth of the matter is that it's a heck of a lot more complicated than that. <coughs> Let me take you through my process. First, while moving from pin to pin and while centering your pick on the pin that you intend to pick, I use heavy tension. This keeps you from moving pins you don't intend to move. Then I lighten up just a bit when I'm first attempting to detect a spool. Now you need to keep the tension pretty high to ensure you don't accidentally move the pin while still, still allowing enough give to detect the feedback. If you think the pin is a spool, use slightly lighter tension and confirm it. Once you detect the spool, you need to set it. Here you're going to have to back way off tension to allow the counter rotation. The exact amount of tension can depend on the strength and thickness of the pick you're using, the stronger the pick that fits your keyway, the heavier the appropriate tension and picking force. But here, the tension and picking force are very high, but in balance. And in doing this, I keep complete control over that pin. Finally, and this is very important, at or near the apex of counter rotation, but before the, the spool sets, I increase the tension. And this does two things. First, it prevents you from oversetting the pin. And second, it helps other pins, it helps prevent other pins from dropping when you set the spool. Now with practice, this entire process happens in a couple of moments. From those descriptions, I hope to have conveyed two things to you. 
First, tension is not static. It needs to be varied, particularly when you're dealing with security pins, but also with standard pins. And second, that I'm using the heaviest tension possible for each stage of the pick. In some cases, the heaviest tension possible might be relatively light, like when you're allowing for counter rotation. But then we crank the tension right back up as soon as we can so we don't lose all the benefits that we just talked about. Uh, okay, I think that's enough for now. This video is getting really long. We're over 15 minutes. What I'd really like for each of you to start thinking about is how you're using tension. Pay close attention to what you're doing. It's probably second nature to most of the advanced pickers out there, so they don't even consciously realize what they're doing. But once you take note of exactly what you're doing, share it with others. Because if we're going to advance the knowledge of our community, we really need an informed discussion of tension strategy. My way of picking may not be the best, but we'll never know until we take note of what we do and start comparing our methods. That's all I have for you today. If you stuck with me this far, thank you very much. If you have any questions or comments, please put them below. If you like this video and would like to see more like it, please subscribe. And as always, have a nice day. Thank you.